continue, let us pray. Father, help us understand, help us to uh, see clearly, to understand clearly, and help us to also um, get to a place of not only understanding and knowing the body, but also of growth in relation to the governance, in relation to the governance of the body. So we pray, and we pray, and we pray to pray. Amen, amen. So scripture, we looked at a scripture uh, in the book of Genesis chapter 2 that says, and God said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. And scripture says, God made man out of the dust of the earth and breathed the breath of life into man. And man became a living being. Man became a living being. So we say that this body is living. We say that this body is called man. It's part and parcel of your manhood. In, not, not to mean... Um, when he says part and parcel of your manhood, that is, it's part and parcel of your humanity. It's part and parcel of your humanity. And we also say that the human body has been constructed so that uh, the spirit soul that you are can contribute to the wealth, to the wealth of the physical realm and can contribute and can also experience, sorry, so that this body can also experience the wealth and glories of God in the physical realm. So, Today we continue along that parameter and we enter into another reality and we're talking about origins. And scripture teaches us that when it comes to the origin of the physical body, many of us think that the origin of the physical body is from the earth. That is partially true. But if you look at creation itself and when God said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness, and God made man out of the dust of the earth, so that means something that the very construction and constitution of man is in the image and the likeness of God. So that means that even the very material that God used to make man is in the image and likeness of God. Otherwise, that material would not be that otherwise man would not be in the image and likeness of God. So the very material that God used to make man is in the image and likeness of God. And we are speaking about the earth in this specific reality. We are speaking about the earth. That's why when you read in scripture, scripture utters the following and says that uh, when, when they, they this vision that uh, John has, he's talking about the woman, he's talking about the woman giving birth to a child, which is Christ, and he's talking about how the earth helped the woman, the earth helped the woman, the earth helped the woman. Scripture also tells us something interesting, that the earth is in groaning, creation is in groaning, the earth is in groaning. Now, when we speak about groaning, groaning also comes in this specific reality. It is from a state of distress. So, creation and the earth are in a state of distress. Now, when it says that creation is in a state of distress and the earth is in a state of dis distress because the earth is part and parcel of creation, then that means that earth itself, in order for something to be in a state of distress, that something must possess consciousness. So that means that earth itself possesses consciousness. And remember we say that there are certain principles of consciousness and principles that govern the reality of consciousness. And one of the principles that govern the reality of consciousness is consciousness itself. Consciousness is the only thing that can host consciousness. So even when it comes to the earth and the very existence of the earth and our existence in the earth and the operations that we carry out from this specific realm of ours that is called earth, the physicality of our existence, it is a consciousness and a state therein and a state that we operate in. Now, when man, before man sinned, man was in a very high vibration and the body that man possessed at that time the body that man was created with the body that is man was a body that was vibrating at a very high frequency so this body that you see has different vibrations that is why it is very much possible for you to enter into the metaphysical or into uh, some spiritual realms i'm saying some some spiritual realms and we look at that later on it's possible for you to enter into some spiritual realms with this specific body having been swallowed up as we said last week into the reality of your spirit soul body it is able to be swallowed up now this swallowing up has to do with an elevation of the vibration of your physical body because your physical body has different vibrations your physical body has different vibrations and this vibration the vibration that you are in now the vibration that we are in now 
is according to our dimension of existence within the realm that is God and it is according to the realms that we exist in within God and in God that is God himself. So when you, when you come to that, you also understand what we said last week, that bodies are in rankings. Your body is in a rank and that rank is according to the rank that you exist in, according to the rank of your stature. So different bodies have different ranks. That means that even the energy and the radiations, the energy radiations from the body and through the body, they are in different degrees. They are in different degrees of light intensities. So we do not radiate the same amount of light within the same reality of light that is Christ. Yes, you are literally speaking the light of the world. It is not something figurative. Literally, you are. So the amount of light that you radiate is according to your rank. It is according to your rank. It is according to the reality and stature of your spirit soul according to your becoming process and the becoming process is nothing more than self-realization which is also attached to God realization because the moment you begin to realize the self and you come to the knowledge of the self you come to the knowledge of the divine within the knowledge of the self because the self itself is a manifestation of the divine it is a portion from the divine in the divine that is the divine and it is a portion of the divine having been given individualization so when you grow in the knowledge of God, we grow in the knowledge of the self. When you grow in the knowledge of the self, we grow in the knowledge of God. Life is self-realization. Life is self-realization. And the articulations that are coming forth right now is simply that. It is a matter of self-realization. Because when we begin to know the body, we also come to the reality of the male and female principle. The male and female principle. That it, when a soul comes on us, because souls have pre-existence and you have existed from day six, when a soul comes on us, according to the destiny of that soul, according to the destiny destiny of that soul within the physical realm that is according to the spin of destiny of that soul that soul will become either male or female that soul will become either male or female so when this body becomes uh, when this soul becomes either male or female it takes on a body that is within the parameters and functionalities of the reality that it will embody in the physical and that reality that it will embody in the physical is also as a uh, it is also a sign and an articulation of the fact that if you are male, the dominant energy in your system and the dominant uh, divine function in your life is very masculine. That is in yourself, from yourself, through yourself, by yourself. It is very mas masculine. And if you are feminine, if you are female, then that means the dominant divine energy and the dominant uh, psychological framework is feminine. So if you must, if it was deemed necessary and it is according to the principles that govern destiny and male and female are principles that govern destiny and a principle that govern soul embodiment that is when a soul is coming down on earth and a soul is taking this physical body so that it can contribute to the wealth of the physical realm so that it can experience the wealth of the physical realm you see it is an imperative that it is either male or female and within that specific reality it is because that reality that you are embodying whether it is the male or female it is the most suitable and it is the most I don't want to use the term convenient. Uh, it is the most... Uh, it, is, it is the reality that is most convergent with your destiny. So, the soul that you are being female, for those of us, for those of you that are female, let me not say us, for those of you that are female, now, that means that being female, that that reality and that body is the one that is most suitable and uh, is the one that is in a state of harmonic convergence with your destiny on earth that your destiny on earth the destiny of your spirit soul the, de the spin of destiny of your spirit soul required for you to have a female body and required for you to have a masculine body that body in and of itself is not an accident that body is within the parameters and the functionalities of your destiny and it is also within the functions and parameters of the possibilities of your soul 
because when a soul becomes female there are certain specific possibilities within the feminine energy that that soul comes to articulate and manifest and when a soul becomes male also there are certain divine possibilities within the masculine energy that that body becomes and comes to articulate so you you realize that even the psychological framework that you possess it is according to design it is not according to accident it is according to design so the moment you see the body and you see that this is a female body then that is an articulation of the divine that the psychological framework and the dominant energy in this soul is female and again it applies also to the male as well but when it comes to the becoming of this body in the womb as as we are told by the man of god in scripture as we are told by david and david said that you need me together in my mother's womb you need me together in my mother's womb so it is in the womb where you find now that the soul is uh, the soul is first projected into the womb and as the soul is projected into the womb there is a contribution of the energy of that specific soul and the energy of uh, and the energy of the layer of consciousness that is received from the to be father and from the to be mother and as they come together there is a convergence of energies and the convergence of energies it is for the formation of the body according to certain layers and realities of consciousness which are imperatives when it comes to the physical and uh, when it comes to physical embodiment as far as the soul is concerned now for instance when you look at yourself very well you have certain physical attributes that are like your mother's or like your father's. That's why some of us are told you look like your father, you look like your mother. And when you meet with someone, they'll be like, ah, is this your brother? You meet with someone, be like, ah, this is your mother. You look alike. Why? Because of the layer of consciousness that played out during your formation. You see, your parents' layer of consciousness, that which they have become, which is also has to do with that which uh, which also has to do with the traits the physical traits and the physical attributes that layer of your consciousness is an imperative of your formation so that which they have become and that which they are physically contributes to your physical formation so this body that you see has different layers of consciousness there is the layer of consciousness that is you and there is the layer of consciousness that has to do with your mother and the layer of consciousness that has to do with your father that's why you have certain attributes that are your fathers and certain attributes that are your mothers physically speaking so the body in and of itself has different layers of consciousness there is the layer of consciousness that is you there is the layer of consciousness that is your father there is the layer of consciousness that is your mother and even still many of us were even told you look like your grandfather that you have a certain attribute in you that is of your grandfather why because there is also an ancestral layer of consciousness that forms part and parcel of your body now these are the origins of the body that you have these layers of consciousness these different dimensions of consciousness which are different dimensions of your body that you are part and parcel of a dimension of your body but your parents your father is part and parcel of a dimension of your body your mother is part and parcel of a dimension of your body your ancestors some of your ancestors according to the becoming process of your ancestry are part and parcel of your body so this your body that you see has diff has four layers we've seen those four layers but there's another fifth layer number one we've seen that there is the layer that is you number two there is the layer that is your father number three there is the layer that is your mother and number four there is the layer that is your grandfather or actually grandfather then you have the fifth there is the layer that is your grand mother as well those are five but there's another sixth one now this sixth one has to do with the layer of consciousness in your body and another dimension and aspect of your body that is your spiritual ancestry your spiritual ancestry the dimension the rank the layer you've come from the layer of consciousness you've come from in god and from god that is also part and parcel of the layer of your body so you see your body has six dimensions this body that you see has six dimensions it has six dimensions so these six dimensions they form the reality of your body now there is another one there is a seventh one that comes into play scripture tells us that when a man and woman 
come together they become one flesh isn't it they become one flesh isn't it now that means that the moment you have become married and you have become one flesh that is you've had intercourse with your wife now your wife becomes the seventh layer of your body you feel me your wife becomes the seventh layer of your body if you are a he and if you are a she your husband becomes the seventh layer of your body so your body has for those of us who are single it has six layers for those of us who are married and got married it has seven layers now let me holler at you and tell you something anyone that you sleep with becomes a layer of your body anyone that you sleep with becomes a layer of your body and becomes part and parcel of your body that is why scripture says do you not know that whoever you sleep with you become one body with you become one body with that means that they become a layer of your body and becoming a layer of your body means that they become part and parcel of the consciousness that is transferred to your body and of the consciousness that constitutes your body so that means that even the movements and operations of your body will be determined by that person that you slept with that their layer of consciousness will play a role in your must in your manifestation now notice of these different layers you are to work through these layers in such a way that the dominant layer of consciousness becomes the layer of your ancestry spiritually speaking now if a person sleeps with around let's say 20 30 people then that means that their body has 30 30 30 layers of consciousness that means that their body has it, it has become multitude multitudinal that means that their body has multiple layers and these multiple layers are the different persons that this person has slept with until that layer of consciousness is dealt with through what we usually call a breaking soul ties that layer of consciousness will be influential that layer of consciousness will be influential that layer of consciousness will be an attribute of the body and will be an attribute of your body so there's some of us that have introduced different layers layers that are not intended and were not intended by god to be part and parcel of our bodies that's why we are told that your body is the temple of the most high now being a temple of the most high that means that the dominant layer of consciousness in that body of yours is supposed to be the presence of god that is the layer of consciousness that is your spiritual ancestry so self-control when the bible talks about the fruit of the spirit it talks about self-control now self-control is a spirit is a spirit and that spirit is the holy spirit now when the bible speaks about that self-control has to do with the reality of functioning from your spiritual ancestry when scripture says we are the body of christ what does it mean now what is christ who is christ christ is the body of our spiritual ancestry so when you're saying that you're the body of christ what you mean is the following that i am this body that you see is the body of my spiritual ancestry so the dominant layer of consciousness in my body and the dominant layer in operation in me and through me and from me is the layer of my ancestry that i embody my spiritual ancestry and when you say you embody your spiritual ancestry that means you're saying that you embody god because the body that is the when we talk about the temple the temple is owned by the god and that temple becomes part and parcel of the god that rules over that temple you see let me holler at you and tell you something the temple of a god is part and parcel of the physicality of that god so if you're writing down notes that's something to write the temple of a god is part and parcel of the physicality of that god so when you say your body is the temple of God, you're saying that this body of yours is part and parcel of the physicality of God. And when we say it is part and parcel of the physicality of God, then what we mean is the following, that this body is God. Because whatever is part and parcel of the physicality of God is God. So the body has also been constructed such that the reality of the body is the physicality of God that this body is the physicality of God 
When you talk about we are partakers of the divine nature. Ah, it is not just a matter of spirit and soul. That means that this body is also a partaker of the divine nature. So this body also possesses a divine nature. And this body is a divine nature in and of itself. Your body is a divine nature. So being a divine nature, the dominant layer of consciousness is supposed to be the layer of your spiritual ancestry. And this is where now we come to the place of prayer. Because any other layer of consciousness dominating your body will interfere with the glory of your body. Bodies have glories. But glories, the glories of the body can be oppressed. The layers of consciousness that are ruling over you and the layers of consciousness that are ruling in you, they have the ability to dictate and determine how your countenance is like. There is such a thing in the prophetic that is known as face reading. Scripture says in the book of Proverbs that wisdom enlightens a person's countenance. When we talk about countenance, we are talking about the face. And not just simply the face, but we are also talking about the physical body and the constitution of the physical body. Because when we speak about the face, face is for identification. Faces are for identification. Faces are for distinction, but faces are also for the revelation and communication of the layers of consciousness that are at work in the person. That is why scripture says wisdom enlightens a person's countenance. And when it says wisdom enlightens a person's countenance, that doesn't just mean the wisdom, wisdom. Uh -uh, no, it's talking about the wisdom that is God. That the wisdom that is God enlightens a person's countenance. So that means that God enlightens your countenance. That means that God brings out the glory of your body. God brings out the glory of your body. That the glory of your body is appointed to be brought out by God. That it is God that brings out the glory of your body. That when the dominant layer of consciousness at work in you is the layer of the consciousness of God, then the glory of your body will be articulated according to the articulation of the divine concerning the body. Because the body was created as a construction that articulates the glory of the divine. And as a construction that articulates the different layers of the consciousness of God and the different, 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 multiple and infinite realities of the consciousness of God within its masculine and within its masculine and feminine energies. That is why you find that we have women that have different bodies. Why? Every body is articulating a reality, a vastness, a uniqueness, a distinction within the variety in God that is God himself. That is why bodies are different because they articulate the variety of the different realities within the feminine energy and within the masculine energy. And that is a reality. It is a reality that is at play. So even when it comes to the body, the constitution of the body, the manifestation of the body, the body articulates the varieties of God in God that are God. That is why you have different bodies. That is why our bodies are unique. And that is why that even our bodies, when you look at the way the body is constructed, when you look at the way the female body is constructed and the glories of the female body, they articulate a certain glorious intelligence and a certain intelligence of glory in God that has to do with the feminine energy and the feminine constitution from God and in God. That is where the masculine body is the way it is. That it is constructed in a specific way. And that construction is for the articulation of the glory of God within his masculine reality. That is why we have broad shoulders. There is an articulation there. That is why the bodies of men are masculine. Why? There is an articulation there. And that articulation is an utterance, a divine utterance. That's why we have different shapes, different sizes. Why? They are articulations of the variety in God and about the variety from God. So the dominant layer of consciousness that rules, because you have these seven, you are appointed to have seven. You're appointed to have seven. And I repeat, you're appointed to have seven dominating, or rather seven dimensions of seven layers of your body in your body that are your body seven layers why you see every consciousness that is at play within your formation is part and parcel of your physical constitution and is part and parcel of your physicality so your physicality has dimensions your physicality has layers your physicality is multitudinal your physicality is multiple in reality and multiple in expression 
So there are some of us, we have different layers that we need to deal with. Why? Because those layers are oppressing your glory and are oppressing the glory of your body. Ah. So I pray for you now in Jesus' name. The people you have slept with, you, you know. I do not know. You, you know. And they are oppressing the glory of your body. I begin to pray right now and I begin to remove that layer of consciousness in the mighty name of Jesus. I remove that layer of consciousness in G Arakasale Mando Zikarabu Seketela Mande 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 Begedi. I begin to pray for you that God will reveal to you the soul ties that you need to break. Because when you break them, you break them for the revelation of the glory of the body. Ah, now let me holler at you and tell you this. You see when the dominant consciousness that is ruling over your body is the consciousness of the divine when the divine is the layer that governs your body and govern the, and governs the manifestations of your body the glory of your body will be revealed according to its originality and according to different degrees of its physicality ah, notice according to different degrees of its physicality you see every realm has its own physicality and when scripture is speaking about Adam and Eve, and it says that Adam and Eve dwelt in Eden. Notice, they dwelt in Eden, isn't it? Adam and Eve dwelt in Eden, in Eden, in Eden. Now we can go to the reality of Eden. And when you begin to speak about the reality of Eden, Eden, Eden is not just a place. Eden is God himself. Eden is God himself. And let me tell you this, there is existence on earth. And there is existence on earth in earth. There is existence on earth and there is existence on earth in earth. Adam and Eve dwelt on earth in earth. You see, on earth in earth. Why? The body that they had at that specific time, the reality of that body and the vibration of that body was so high such that the only place that they could reside is on earth in earth. There are entities that reside on earth in earth. For us, we reside on earth. But there are entities that reside on earth in earth. And there are entities that reside in the earth. When you speak about in the earth, we're talking about in, 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 inside the earth. For us, we reside on earth. But there are entities that reside on earth in earth. And Adam and Eve resided on earth in earth. And the moment they fell, their vibration just, their vibration took them out of on earth in earth to on earth. And the glories that are contained on earth in earth are greater than the glories that are contained on the earth. You see, even the earth has different physicalities of itself. Because you are created from the earth. That means that you partake, you are part and parcel and a partaker of the different physicalities of the earth. That's why earth has different dimensions. Earth has different dimensions. We all know about the dimensions of time, da, 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 the dimensions of space, all that kind of stuff. But you see, there is another dimension of earth that is in the earth. And the dimension of in the earth has to do with the inmost. Because earth has an inmost layer of itself on itself. Notice, I did not say it has an inmost layer of itself in itself. But I said an inmost layer of itself on itself. And man existed in the innermost layers of earth on earth here so there is that specific reality so there is a vibration of your physicality of this your body that is high and let me say this you see any layer of consciousness because the moment you sleep with someone that layer of consciousness if it is lower than yours and becomes part and parcel of you it will lower your frequency the different layers of your body hey thank you holy spirit the different layers of your body can cause dissonance in your body they can cause dissonance between your body and your spirit your body and your spirit soul so the layers when the layers of your body are not in harmony the energy being transmigrated and being transferred to your body from the spirit soul that you are will not come in the fullness of its gloriousness. Because there are hindrances. There are other hindrances. There are other layers of consciousness at play that are affecting the full manifestation and the full revelation of the glory of your body. 
then that means that they affect the manifestation of the possibilities of the soul that are made to that are appointed to be articulated through the body and that are meant to be articulated from the body by the body because we say the body is for the articulation of the possibilities of the soul so there is what cannot flow from you that is in you because of the different layers of consciousness that are at play in your life and the moment you begin to deal with those layers of consciousness you begin to come to places of glory you begin to come to places of glory in yourself because every soul has glory in itself that are itself and the moment you begin to deal with these different layers of glory you come to the glory within you and you come to the articulation of the glory within you why because whatever layer of consciousness is governing your body and whatever layer of consciousness oh thank you holy spirit you see sometimes there are different layers of consciousness are in contention in your body you see sometimes sickness is because of contention and it's a matter of contention over the body because a certain layer of consciousness is seeking dominance and there is another layer of consciousness that also wants dominance because every consciousness must dominate there is a principle of consciousness that is consciousness itself that is called the cosmic principle of free will and authority see the authority of consciousness is consciousness so these different layers of consciousness are different authorities Allah. they are different authorities so that means that there is a conflict in the body and there is a conflict over the body because every layer of consciousness is seeking articulation every layer of consciousness is seeking dominance that is why it is not always a good thing to be named after someone because whoever you are named after that person becomes part and parcel of you their consciousness becomes part and parcel of you and their consciousness will seek to be articulated and to be made manifest every consciousness must be made manifest now imagine with me imagine with me right now the person you've been named after is seeking manifestation is seeking to be made manifest through this physical body God is seeking to be made manifest through the physical body the person you've slept with is seeking to be made manifest through the physical body the persons you've slept with they're seeking to be made manifest through this physical body now do you see the contention there you see the contention you see the contention that is why we need to understand that being named after is a matter of consciousness transference that is why if you examine very well in your families hey, though all those people called let's say Kenya, they have a certain reality that must manifest why it is because of that name you see let me tell you something about names names are consciousness if you're writing down notes write that names are consciousness names are entities names are entities that seek physical manifestation names are entities that seek physical manifestation it was William Shakespeare who told us what is in a name even that which is called a rose but would, would smell as sweet if it was called by any other name and he says that even a rose would smell as sweet if it was called by any other name and he says what is in a name that is not just a philosophical question that is a spiritual question and that is a question that is scripture in and of itself that is scripture that is an utterance of the divine what is in a name consciousness is in a name what is in a name entities are in names a name is an entity so the person that you've been named after is an entity that has been integrated into your physicality so the moment you are named after them ah, that name that name which becomes your identity oh, that name which becomes your identification so every time you are being called that entity that entity itself when you're called after them that entity seeks a claim to you says you've been called me so you are me you're a portion of me so that which i am must also play out in you and that which played out in me must also play out in you not just spiritually but physically as well so there are things that happen in your life because of the person you've been named after 
there are certain physical realities that manifest and you begin to wonder ah what is going on ah, ah. it is the layer of consciousness that you've been named after it is the entity you've been called and because you've been called an entity that entity must respond when you're called please hear me that entity must respond when you're called and when you're called in the physical that entity is summoned with you and is summoned to you because you are being called and your calling is that entity being called so there is a manifestation that is at play. That's why one time I told my mom, Ah, mom, I've been given very clear instructions about my children. My mom is like, okay, what are these instructions? And I told her, my, ch my children will not be called after anyone. <gasps> she brought issues. I explained to her. She didn't digest it. Then, after a while, she was watching Kameme TV. We thank God for Kameme TV. And the, a man of God was articulating this same reality about being names and everything. Then I came in the evening, I'd come from the gym and she told me, ah, a pastor was teaching and the pastor said this and this and this. And it was what I, what I had told her. And I told her, you see, now do you understand why they shall not be called after? I was dealing with a child. There is a child. The child was about four years old. And I was praying. I had to conduct deliverance on a child that's four years. Why? Because the entity they've been called after. They've been called. They had been called after the father of, uh, after the father of their father. Now, being called after the father of their father, the realities of the father of their father was seeking manifestation. That layer of consciousness was seeking to manifest. That entity was coming, and that entity wanted to play out. So I had to pray and conduct deliverance. And I conducted deliverance, and boom. Because I remember the child was crying at night crying and crying and crying and crying every night now what's going on ah i got revelation Poof. prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and the child stopped crying why because i dealt with that layer of consciousness i removed that layer of consciousness i redeemed the name and uh, in redeeming the name i separated the child from that layer of consciousness so that that reality does not seek to play out you see whenever a consciousness seeks to play out within your physicality that means that the inheritance you possess and is and ought to be made manifest physically can have hindrances there are things you don't realize in your life because of some physicalities in your physicality because every layer of consciousness every layer of consciousness in you is a layer of your physicality so the layers of your physicality if something is about to be made manifest because it is not just made manifest outside it is made manifest from within the things of god even the blessings of god they are made manifest from within the blessings of god they're made manifest from within you receive them then after you have received them you begin to see the physical manifestation why they flow from you there is that stream when the bible says that out of your belly shall flow rivers or streams of living water when it's talking about living water this living water has to do with the blessings of god so the blessings of god they flow forth from above to you and to you then from you so if something is about to flow from you but there is a layer of consciousness in opposition with that flow do you think it's going to come that layer of your physicality becomes a hindrance to certain manifestations of wealth and glories within your physicality and from your physicality. So every layer of your physicality affects the administration of another layer of your physicality. Some of us, our bodies are in contention. Our bodies are in dissonance. Our bodies are not in harmony. And that's why sometimes there are certain sicknesses. Why? Because the body is not in harmony. The body is contending. Its physicality is in a state of contention. One, the, one aspect of consciousness is higher. One aspect of physicality is higher. The other aspect of physicality is lower. One physicality is against this other physicality. Ah, God forbid that you're named after two people and those two people had a conflict in the physical. That means you'll also have a conflict in yourself. You feel me? Are, are you capturing this? You're capturing. So the moment you begin to call children after people, you better first pray for that name and sanctify that name before you call that child. Because there is a destiny you bring into play in that child's life. And that destiny must play out. I had to separate myself from certain names. And it is appropriate to gather the intelligence of the meaning of the name. Why? Because the meaning of a name will seek physicality and the meaning of a name becomes part and parcel of your physicality it becomes part and parcel of your physicality why because when it comes to identification are you not identified by that name and is that name not 
you it is you it has become you so the moment you give a name you are you are actually projecting another physicality into the child names are if you're writing down notes this is something to write names are projections of physicality names are projections of physicality and every physicality must manifest every physicality must manifest the meaning of names are part and parcel of the constitution of your physicality that's another thing to write down the meaning of names are part and parcel of the constitution of your physicality so do you see how your body has different origins it has so many origins isn't it your body has different origins there is the origin of your father the origin of your mother there is the origin of your there is the origin of your body that is you because you are part and parcel of the origin of your body because your soul and your energy contributes to the formation of the body so there is an origin of the body that is you and there is an origin of the body that is your father there is an origin of the body that is your mother and there is an origin of the body that is your grandfather and there is an origin of the body that is your grandmother and there is the origin of your body that is your spiritual ancestry how many origins are those seven isn't it you see seven so the physical body has seven originations because even when God said let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness ah ah do you know that when he said let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness and we say that we've come from different realms of God in God isn't it when God said that and there were spirits that converged and said let us spirits of God that converged and said let us make Daniel in our image and likeness because Daniel is from three realms Daniel is from knowledge wisdom and understanding now because he's from those three realms that means that his spiritual ancestry and the contribution of uh, and the physicality of his body according to his ancestry has three layers you feel me has three layers isn't it and ooh, the other layers with hey, hey, hey. Well, I wish we I wish I wish we had time and I could articulate this more and I shall articulate it next week when we get into the layers of the physical body because when you come into this specific reality you realize that your body has multiple layers your body your physicality has a multiplicity about it there is a multiplicity of physicality in your body and your body is multiple in aspects and multiple in dimensions there is the seven that we have mentioned that you're supposed to embody physically but when it comes to your spiritual ancestry ah, and the layers within your eh, eh, the layers within your spiritual ancestry and the layers from your spiritual ancestry ah, but there are so many some have seven and let me say this is let me hold let me hold that thought for next week now you begin to understand your physic your physicality and you begin to understand the operations of your physicality that this your physicality operates according to the reality of its different degrees or different dimensions of physicality and these different dimensions of your physicality they possess a different intensities when it comes to energies and that means that they they also contribute to the formation and constitution of what is your physical energy because your body is part and parcel of your physical energy it's part and parcel of the physicality of God of the physical frequency of God so this physical frequency of God contains an energy and that energy is harmony so for some of us and I repeat what I said earlier our bodies are not in a state of harmony and the reason why they're not in a state of harmony is because of the different layers that the body has and some of these layers are not in harmony some layers are negative energies other layers are positive energies you see so you find there is conflict there's no harmony there's no resonance there's no harmonic convergence so that means that even the productions of the body and the productions of the soul through the body will be of a different quality quality is determined by physicality quality is determined by physicality let me lie to you quality is determined by physicality your physicality determines the quality that you produce the quality of your physicality determines the quality of your production 
the quality of your physicality determines the quality of your production now are there something i said earlier so that we see we see hey shaka mandela does you see we know we've said you yourself you yourself if we look at it generally let's not go into the aspects let us not go into the different streams we'll go into that later now if we look at you we said you yourself you're part of your physicality your father is part of your physicality your mother is part of your physicality your spiritual ancestry is part of your physicality isn't it your grandfather is part of your physicality your grandmother is part of your physicality isn't it now those are six now every one of this every one of this expect you has six as well so how many physicalities do you have how many layers of consciousness contribute to your physicality 30 36 because the six ukijitoa there are six including you let's remove you there are five senior when we remove you there are five so of these five five times five 25 isn't it but there are other things we've not considered that it's not even five five times five because when it comes to your mother and father they have seven because they have become one they have become one isn't it so they have seven so are you seeing the different layers of your physicality that you possess and that's why God says that I need you together in your mother's womb. Why? Because the knitting together of God in your womb, when God needs you together in your mother's womb, it is so that he can determine certain realities and certain layers of consciousness that will be at play in your life. So there are certain weaknesses that God appoints so that you can come about because he knows that those weaknesses will work in your favor and not against you. But there are certain weaknesses that God said, ah, yeah, 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 no, this one, no. Why? Because if it became, you will be destroyed. So the physicality you possess and the different layers of your physicality, they are determined by God according to Jeremiah 29, 11, that only I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a future and a hope. That there is a certain physicality. If you possessed that physicality, ah, you'd be troubled. And you'd face a lot of issues if a certain reality was part and parcel of your physicality. because even eh, when you even begin about to speak about last last if you've ever struggled with last you realize last is a physicality there is a way your body feels isn't it there is a way your body feels why is your body feeling like that because it has a certain layer of physicality and that layer of physicality is manifest Every layer of physicality must manifest in the body before it manifests from the body. So if you're writing down notes, that's something to write. Every layer of physicality must manifest in the body before it manifests from the body. And understand this, every layer of consciousness seeks physicality and has physicality. Even the devil himself, he seeks physicality. Physicality is the only way that consciousness dominates. Without physicality, consciousness cannot dominate. So if you're writing notes, that's something to add. Without physicality, consciousness cannot dominate. Without physicality, consciousness cannot be expressed. So there are things, there are things you do and the things that you do, oh, God is taking me somewhere let me go to that place there are things you do but these things that you do are because of certain layers of your physicality and when these layers of your physicality are dealt with these things will cease because the layers of your physicality <laughs> hear me now the layers of your physicality are also layers of your spirit my spirit has different layers. We've mentioned those five things. Your, your spiritual ancestry. We've mentioned your father. We've mentioned your father. 
I've mentioned your father, you've mentioned your mother, we have mentioned your grandfather, we have mentioned your grandmother. Aha, uh -huh. and there is another ancestry there, isn't it? Now, they form layers of your consciousness. They form layers of your consciousness. They form layers of the soul. The soul has different layers. And the different layers of the soul are the different layers of your physical body. That is why you got to understand. And I said this earlier. Sex is consciousness projection. And the consciousness that is projected to you during sex becomes a layer of your soul and becomes a layer of your physicality. So sex adds to your physicality. Sex adds to your physicality. Sex introduces another layer. Let me say this. Sex is making another layer of your body in your body that is your body. You see that you see that your wife, eh? You see that your husband. Other single people are not saying amen. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You see that your husband. Uh -uh. Ladies. You see that your husband. Do you see that your husband? Amen. You see that your wife. Yeah, I see. She's here. You see that your wife. That your wife is part of your physicality. That your husband is part of your physicality. You are no longer two, but now you see, you're seeing that the body, according to its becoming, the body has different dimensions of origination. And these different dimensions of origination also have different dimensions of origination. Ah. And according to the becoming process of your parents, your parents determine, you as a parent, you determine the physicality that becomes in your child and the physicality that becomes from your child if there is a physicality you received and you did not like but you dealt with it and because you dealt with it it is no more when your children now come and that physicality is no more there is another physicality you will project and it will be a physicality that is that is as a result of the victory that you have attained Every layer of consciousness you deal with becomes a layer of physicality that is not transmigrated. You hear me now? If you're writing notes like that, every layer of consciousness you deal with in your becoming process becomes a physicality that is not transmigrated. It becomes a physicality that is not transmigrated. But that layer, of, that layer of consciousness that you do not deal with, it becomes a layer of physicality that is transmigrated and becomes part and parcel of the origin story of your children. So whatever your parents did not deal with and they, when they had you, it becomes part and parcel of your origin story. It becomes part and parcel of your layer of physicality, the origin of physicality. That is why when we speak about physicality, physicality doesn't just have an origin. Physicality has origins. Eh? And even, eh, thank you. And even earth, earth, earth is one of your physicalities. So are, are you seeing the different physicalities that you possess? There is earth. Earth is, earth, now earth is actually the number seven one. There is earth. Oh, earth is number six. Then the wife, seven, da da da. We look at that. So we find we have earth. Earth is your, earth is your part of your physicality. You are part of your physicality. Your spiritual ancestry is part of your physicality. You are father, part of your physicality. Your mother, part of your physicality. Your grandmother, part of your physicality. Your grandfather, part of your physicality. Those are seven. Those are seven. You possess those seven. The moment a child is coming, a child comes with seven physicalities. And they come with seven physicalities, which has, these seven physicalities has different layers of itself in itself that are itself. Everything has itself in itself. So your body has multiple physicalities. So these seven, then you come together, you and your husband, and 
or you, uh, you and your husband, or you and your wife, then what happens? Another one is introduced. <laughs> and whatever consciousness you develop, please hear me, whatever consciousness you develop and whatever consciousness you activate becomes part of your physicality. So the becoming process and self-realization is a matter of expanding your physicality and expanding the layers of your physicality. So if you're writing notes, that's something to write. The becoming process stroke the self-realization process is a matter of enhancing and adding to your physicality it's a matter of introducing different layers of your physicality to your physicality and when we talk about physicality we're talking about your body it's about bringing certain dimensions of your body to life and the more certain dimensions of your body are brought to life within divine parameters the more your body ascends to a higher dimension of vibration but if you introduce negative realities, ay, the vibration of your physical body, nah. you see, when we speak about ascending in rank, we come to higher ranks through becoming. It is a matter of consciousness activation and it's a matter of self-realization. Self-realization is consciousness activation and consciousness activation is physicality, is actually physical activation. Consciousness activation is physical activation. It's activating certain degrees and dimensions of your physicality in your physicality that are not yet active. It's about bringing them to life. And when you bring them to life, the natural abilities of your body will be enhanced. There's something that you do, but you can do better. And one of the things that will help you to do it better is when you have patience. And is it patience or consciousness? It is. So when you have patience, those things that you manifest from your physicality and in your physicality will increase in quality. Manipata. They will increase in quality. But if you lack patience, the quality that you produce will be affected. Why? Because there is a physicality that is necessary to eat that is missing. Hear me? You see? I think we need to talk about understanding your physicality. We've come to it in origins. That's part of it. But let me say this. Everything you physically possess is part and parcel of your physicality. And everything, every child that you birth is part of your physicality. That your daughter, that your son, part of your physicality. We talk about spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers, isn't it? <laughs> you see, your spiritual father or your spiritual mother is part of your physicality. So be careful who you call father and you who you call mother. Why? Because the one that you go to and you call father, mother, you are saying, I have originated from you. Or you are saying, I want to originate from you. That's what you're saying, father, mother. When you call this person my spiritual father, you are saying, I want your physicality to become part of my physicality. So you make them part of your physicality. And anyone that causes you, calls you son or calls you daughter and you accept, ah, you begin again the process of consciousness transference. Why? A father and mother, a father and mother, we speak about father and mother, they are part and parcel of the reality of consciousness uh, embodiment. So that means that when you, when you call father and mother, their consciousness begins to be transferred to you so that you can manifest them and become as they have become. Why? The father and mother is a reality that must play out in every child's consciousness. And we've seen that because in the womb there is that formation. So the moment you come and you say, this is my father, there is a layer of consciousness. Oh, this is my mother. There is a layer of consciousness that begins to be transmigrated and you enter, as it were, into another womb. And as you enter into this womb, you are birthed from this womb again. So you see, men have different birthings. There is the birthing that is a matter of coming into the physical. But there is another bad thing within the physical. And the bad thing within the physical has to do with who you call father and who you call mother in the spiritual sense. Oh, this is my spiritual father. This is my spiritual mother. Ah, you've taken yourself into their womb. Into the womb of their spirit. Into the womb of their physicality. Into the womb of that which they have become. And they will bath you as they, has been, as, as they have become. Why? Because bathing is in dimensions of becoming. That's why sometimes you see People say, this is my father, this is my mother. And you're struggling with what they struggle with. Why? Because you entered into their womb and they birthed you. So there is birthing, but there is birthing within birthing. 
there is bathing and there is bathing within bathing so there is the bathing you are given by your physical parents but there is another bathing you are given by your spiritual parents and the bathing you are given by your spiritual parents also is another kind and is actually another type of your physical bathing let me tell you spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers bath physically as well when you say this is my father that father will bath you and they will bath you to uh, they will bath you in their image and in their likeness so you see they become another layer of your physicality they become part of your origin story anyone that you call spiritual father spiritual mother is part and parcel of your origin story so be careful who you make your origin story because you will manifest according to origin manifestations if you're writing notes write this manifestations are, are according to origin manifestations are according to origin so the physical body will manifest according to origin so they will manifest in you anyone you call father mother spiritual they will manifest in you and they will manifest from you you hear me come on let's start want us to want us to wind up ah uh, hear hear me now you see you cannot reconstruct and reconstitute the soul without reconstructing and reconstituting the body soul reconstruction and reconstitution is body reconstruction and, and body reconstitution so when you begin to deal with these different layers examine yourself today and i pray i pray for you now even for you that is watching i'm praying for everyone including you i pray for you now that god will reveal to you the different layers of your physicality that are in contention and the different layers of your physicality that do not need to be part of your physicality when scripture says thank you holy spirit when scripture says that one must be born from above that means that their physicality is from above and when you say the physicality from above that has to do with your sp spiritual ancestry so being born again is being born again also in higher terms there is also a physicality in you being born again you do not enter into your mother's womb again like Nicodemus said but you are born again from the physical womb of Christ so that he can become part and parcel of your physicality and so you are termed the body of Christ ah because in certain terms you are also the body of your parents so this body that you know as you is also termed as the body of your parents in certain physical within the reality of its physicality so lord now we begin to deal with our physicality come on pray pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit the spirit will respond to this utterance because this is an utterance of the spirit the spirit will respond to this utterance father we pray in the name of jesus that the different aspects and dimensions of our physicality that lord are working against us and not for us that they will be dealt with in jesus name the father those that we have called father mother spiritually but they have become a physicality that is a thorn in the flesh